Cobbiz. Hello and welcome to Cobbiz. My name is Shalin and today we will be learning about how an EIA report is made as per the guidelines issued by the Ministry of Environment and Forest. So as you may know, the purpose of the EIA for any project is to obtain environmental clearance. Road networks, water supply and management, energy production supply and management, communication services and many such infrastructural projects are all part of developmental projects. So at the time of selection of the site, the proponent must ensure that the land use status of the proposed area is consistent with the area's approved developmental plan. If no approved plan exists, the approval from the competent authorities should be obtained. Conducting an EIA is the next step. The project that requires an environmental impact assessment are designated as category A and category B. So let's understand the generic structure of the environmental impact assessment report. According to the Ministry of Environment Forest, the EIA guidelines were issued in 2006 for developmental projects. Now the generic format of the EIA document should include the following. Introduction, Projects Description, Environmental Description, Anticipated Environmental Impacts and Mitigation Measures, Alternative Analysis for Technology and Site, Environmental Monitoring Program, Additional Studies, Projects Benefits, Environmental Management Plans, Summary and Conclusions. So, when we talk about the composition of the above format, details like the project proponent's profile, contact information, brief description of the project, etc. must be included. In this section, the details of the project such as its nature, size, location and its significance to the country and the area must be mentioned. An action plan must be properly described in terms of existing national and international environmental laws. If any restrictions or limitations are imposed by the district administration, state or the central government, they must also be included. Details of any litigation pending against the project or the project site in any court should be provided. In the event of project's expansion or modernization, the environmental compliance status for the current project should be provided. Let's see the documents that are required in case an EIA is needed for a development project. First is the status of environmental clearance and compliances with the terms and conditions for the existing project. Next is the validity of the air and water consent orders. Next is hazardous waste authorization for the existing project. Next comes the notices and directions issued by the regulatory agencies under section 33A of the Water Act and section 31A of the Air Act during the last one year. Next is the identification of natural hazard prone areas such as earthquake prone areas, cyclone prone areas, flood prone areas and landslide prone areas. Let's understand the guidelines issued for development projects in different areas. First, let's talk about how the guidelines addresses the rights of the workers. To ensure the proper health and safety of construction workers, effective provisions for basic sanitation, drinking water and equipment or mechanical safety must be included as a part of your EIA. Next is considering the interest of local community into account. So the guidelines for development projects insist on highlighting the advantages of the proposed project to the community, the region and the country. This section can also include beneficial details such as improvements from the project's infrastructure as well as any auxiliary business that may emerge as a result of the project. Next is development of supporting infrastructure. As per the guidelines, the EIA must include improvements to social infrastructure such as roads, trains, townships, housing, water supply, electricity, drainage, education institution, hospitals, etc. Employment potential for skilled, semi-skilled and unskilled labor during the construction and the operation phase of the project must also be highlighted. Next is skill development. So, special attention should be paid to the employment potential of the local population as well as the requirement to impart relevant skills to them in order to train them to be eligible for such employments. The next in the guidelines is for the waste management. Proper waste management including garbage collection, segregation, treatment and disposal should be included in the development project. Infrastructure maintenance as well as citizens' security and safety must also be assured. Lastly, there are also guidelines for creation of awareness about the project. So, for category A and B projects, 
apart from obtaining environmental clearance from the Ministry of Environment Forest or the State Environment Impact Assessment Authority, the project proponent must also advertise in popular publication media that the project has received environmental clearance and the information of the MOEF website and host this information on the website of the Ministry of Environment and Forest. Lastly, there are guidelines on monitoring. On the 1st of June and 1st of December of each calendar year, the project management shall provide a half yearly compliance report in respect to the prescribed previous environmental clearance terms and conditions. All such reports must also be made public as per the guidelines for development projects. So this was all for today's video. If you are looking for the assistance of certified consultants that can help you with the planning and the conduct of your EIA, you can connect with our experts with the details given below. We at Corbis help our clients with all environmental compliances related to their projects. Please like and share if you found this information useful. You can also subscribe to our channel and visit our website www.corbis.io. Thank you for watching.